Okay, uh, this slide shows aerobic glycolysis and DNA damage consist, and these are consistent with promoting carcinogenesis. Aerobic glycolysis, glycolysis is the preferred way of, of cancer cells to metabolize. They, they don't like the ATP very much, and uh, this is an ideal, creates an ideal environment for them. And so they love to eat sugars. And uh, uh, if you suppress the uh, oxidative phosphorylation or the mitochondria, you're more likely to default to your glycolysis. So this is called the Warburg effect. Uh, I suspect the Warburg effect is playing a role in this uh, antibiotic cancers. Now, uh, epidemiology. A Finnish lady named Kilkinen looked at relative risk, and she found prostate, breast, lung, and endocrine increased. The numbers don't look a lot over one, but when you consider there are billions of people using antibiotics, these amount to huge numbers worldwide. Um, relative risk is greater than one and a half for six treatments or more antibiotics for skin, duodenum, pancreas, kidney, bladder, and male genitals, thyroid, myeloma, and leukemia. Uh, Newman also found increased risk of bowel cancer and velicere prolonged use of leads to fatal breast cancer. Ben Borsi and Ronak Mantani found that use of penicillin was associated with elevated risk of esophageal, gastric, and pancreatic cancers, and he had used age-adjusted odds ratios. So there you go. It, uh, the risk of prostate cancer increased uh, modestly with use of penicillin, quinolone, sulfonamides, and tetracyclines, and lung cancer risk increased with the use of penicillin, encephalosporins, or macrolides. Um, the risk of breast cancer was modestly associated. There was no association between use of antivirals and antifungals and cancer risk. Short-chain fatty acids and immune cells, immunity. But if our immunity goes down, cancer gets a leg up, okay? So antibiotics knock out the short-chain fatty acid bacteria in the gut and this leads to a deficit of SCFAs. Uh, butyrate, propionate, and acetate promote intestinal epithelial barrier function and regulate the host mucosal immune system. We need that. Knock those out and bingo, you become a target, sitting target for pathogens. You become a sitting target for cancer. Immune impacts of antibiotics. Um, uh, Many me medical consequences opens the door to adventitious infections, pathogenic viruses, bacteria, worms, and some of these are cancer-causing, and I will list these. Viruses and antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections increase uh, risk uh, of contagion, wave your immune system down. The next six slides list organisms that cause cancer that may be facilitated by a Im depressed immune system. And if they do, this would increase population cancer incidence. In Canada, we're now up to 50%. Okay. <clears throat> IARC looked at these guys. HBV, uh, hepatitis B virus, uh, hepatitis C virus, hepatitis D virus, uh, and hepatocellular carcinomas. Well, we do have a um, vaccine now or two of these, and, and uh, this is a good thing. It's saving a lot of lives. Uh, we need uh, more vaccines for the rest of these guys. Uh, there's a bacteria. Oop, I think I might have skipped a few previous. Let's go back. Um, yeah. Uh, bacteria that could cause cancer, Helicobacter pylori, non-cardiac gastric cancer. Um, non-cardia, streptococcus bovis, colorectal cancer, seminal typhi, gallbladder, bartonella, vascular tumors, gut microbiome, fusobacterium, as I was talking about before, gastrovascular cancers and colon cancer, and chlamydia, phyla, pneumonia, lung cancer. Here are some other ones. Uh, papillomavirus, HPV, all of these viruses can cause cervical cancer. Um, HPV, various ones, skin cancers, and MMTV is one that I think should be on the list. Uh, mouse mammary tumor virus is transmitted by saliva from person to person, 
and it's, it'll be linked to breast cancer. Enough times now that I'm kind of worried about it. These are other viruses, polyoma viruses, that can cause cancers. Malignant mesothelioma is the most interesting for me because we've always thought it was asbestos. And it could be, but it could also be SD40. And we picked this guy up from polio vaccine that was contaminated with monkey virus. Uh, Epstein-Barr virus, HHV4, Burkitt's lymphoma. Okay, I'm very concerned about that one. Um, that's a kissing disease, um, uh, Hodgkin's disease, lymphoma, and nasopharyngeal carcinoma, HHV4. It's a nasty one, and we need a vaccine for that badly. Uh, it contaminates kids in, in generally in high school. By high school, end of high school, most of them have got it. Kaposi sarcoma, primary fusion, lymphoma. Uh, these are some of the retroviruses that cause cancers, breast cancer, prostate, cervical leukemia, adult T-cell leukemia, and worms that cause cancer, uh, schistosomes and mansoni liver flukes, and osteoclonorchus uh, sinensis, cholangiocarcinomas. Okay, DNA damage in chronic inflammation. Now, chronic inflammation is something that happens when you get infections. And uh, various things will cause chronic inflammation. And if these are left, they will send a signal off to the cancer stem cells to come on up. There's a nice, warm place, cozy place where you can start to multiply. So we want to get inflammation under control. <laughs> Reactive oxygen tends to cause that. So what do we do when we have infection inflammation? Yes, antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. Um, okay, so there's a strategy been developed by Silvio Di Flora Paolo Bonani. He's done a nice job, I think, of summarizing some of the, the uh, strategic approaches to dealing with these. Uh, inflammation, chemical hepatocarcinogenesis, use chemo prevention, diet and drugs, avoid exposure, uh, health education, heterocyclical means in food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Regulations uh, for food, uh, HEC prevention, um, um, hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatitis C, um, uh, hepatitis B. We have vaccines, uh, general, so general prophylaxis. So these are the sort of strategies that you can take on a society wide basis. Bacterial infection, rutin, can become mutated and cause cancer. Um, bacterial fecal pentines can produce mutations and cause cancer or lead to cancer. And hydroxyl radicals can attack the DNA. Call it bactin, can cause DNA breaks and BTF genotoxins, interleukin inflammatory cytokines, which cytokines are, of course, uh, taken off in the uh, uh, current uh, pandemic. P53 tumor suppressant gene functions. Cell cycle arrest, apoptosis, senescence, mitochondrial OP, making ATP, NAD, glutamine metabolism, glycosis regulation, lipid metabolism, antioxidant regulation, homeostasis of cell metabolism, redox. All these functions are potentially compromised by antibiotic P53 TKO. Okay, so you knock out the tumor suppressor gene, and these guys, all these jobs go begging. And when they do, your body is in trouble. It's on chromosome 17. It's the guardian of the cells. And it will kill um, cells that are going out of control. And so it, we need it badly to be healthy. These are some of the insults that can affect the DNA. Tumor suppressor genes, formation of free radicals. Many ways to get there. Uh, diet, antibiotics, lotions, creams, methylation, alkylation, DNA methyl transferase damage, so on and so forth, x-rays. Now, pesticides, what about pesticides? Well, mitochondria are whacked by pesticides, and the ubiquitin proteasome system, which breaks down proteins, is also whacked. Uh, the Chinese uh, researchers have done some really great work, and they found that uh, uh, the UPS system, uh, ubiquitin proteasome system, is clogged by these things. So it's a eureka story. Uh, 
and it's caused by mitochondrial dysfunction and, and UPS dysfunction. Serious major systemic harm. Some of the cancers that are caused by pesticides, um, these have all been linked to pesticides. So uh, the uh, antibiotics are, are uh, basically kindergarten compared to what the pesticide industry has done. Reactive nitrogen and reactive oxygen, both ex endogenous and exogenous radicals can produce DNA damage linked to colorectal, prostate, breast, lung, bladder cancers. There's the mutated P53 gene and some of the uh, defects that it starts to generate when it takes over. Types of DNA damage uh, you find with uh, reactive oxygen, uh, DNA, DS, double strand breaks, single strand breaks, adduct formations. Um, uh, we need P53 for metabolic stress, hypoxia, ribosomal stress. Oh, oh. Um, Fusobacterium was able to uh, cause an expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and of course this will um, increase uh, uh, the toxicity and it may lead to uh, intestinal cancers. P53 is the master guardian of our genes. And there's the story of SV40, the virus we picked up from um, uh, polio vaccines. They're now being transmitted person to person. Uh, uh, Okay, and WPTP53 protein, known as Puma, for P53, upregulated modulator of apoptosis, apoptosis, is a Jekyll and Hyde story deluxe because what happens is the P53 gene goes to work for the cancer cells and becomes their protector. So this is a worst case scenario, um, but it also, helps uh, cancer to get a leg up and get started. Here's some of the more nuanced effects of microbiota in producing toxins and damage in the um, intestine. Now there are down-regulated microRNA in breast cancer. MicroRNA have been overlooked in the past. Uh, they're very important in, in uh, gene expression and in protein folding and in determining um, the complete success of a gene. Um, we find some are down-regulated in breast